idcwoodcraft.com. Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. Welcome to this Vectric related video <laughs> where we're going to talk about a very common problem that I see brand new beginners who are just working with the Vectric software. They have this problem all the time and they don't really understand because they don't know the software and it's just part of the learning curve. But in this video, you're going to learn exactly this little problem that as a beginner, you will almost certainly run into and how to get around it really quickly. I got an email from our CNC brother, Dylan, who is simply trying to cut out a charcuterie board. He wants to cut out the board and cut out the hole and he can't get the software to cut out the board and he doesn't understand why. There are two things that are happening on this that because Dylan is brand new, isn't skilled enough to see but we all go through that and you are probably going to go through this too so we're going to dive into the software we're going to look at the error that is getting and i'm going to show you exactly how to fix it so when you run into it you will be able to solve it and move right on so let's get into the software here's the email i got from dylan it says hey garrett if you don't mind i'm having an issue with my first project Trying to do just a simple profile cut for a charcuterie board. I was able to get the hole in the handle to work, but not the actual profile cut of the board. It gave me an error message, and he sent a photo, and he asked me, what are the thoughts um, on this? And here is the error that he got. It says, error, no toolpath generated for current parameters. Check the tool can fit into selected vectors at machining depth. So we're going to go into the project that Dylan had, which is this right here. So this is Dylan's project. It's a simple, basic charcuterie board. It has a outer profile and it has a hole in it on the handle. So we're going to go just take a look at Dylan's project to where he's gotten it to. And we're going to dissect it and solve this very common problem that many, many beginners have. And you will, uh, you, you'll be able to overcome this by the time you're done with this video. So we're going to go take a look at the toolpath by selecting this blue arrow button in the upper left hand corner. And that is going to switch us over to the toolpath. And then we can see that D uh, Dylan has made two toolpaths. So I'm going to take a look at the first one by, well, before we take a look at the toolpaths, let's just see how this generates out. So what we're going to do is we are going to have the software actually cut it out so we can see what it looks like. At the very bottom of all the icons, the bottom row all the way to the left, when you hover over that icon, it says preview toolpaths. Select that and then suddenly this board appears and we can see something right away in this. And what I see is there is no toolpath generated for the outside of the charcuterie board, which it should be seen here because when we look down at the lower right corner where it says profile one and profile two, you notice that the two boxes are checked. That means that we should actually be able to see where the router bit is going. And what we only see are these blue circles. We actually see a red line in here too. If I turn up, you see a red line, a green line, some cyan lines, and some dark blue lines. The red line is the rapid move of the machine. So the rapid move of the machine will be at the lower left corner, way, way over there. And then it's going to rapid along this line up over the hole. And then it's going to, let's move this a little bit closer. It's going to plunge down in. It's going to cut the circle there, then plunge again, cut that circle, plunge again, cut the third circle and plunge again. And then you see it's acting a little weird there. That's because he has something called tabs. Now we'll take a look at that as we move along. But what's missing are the blue lines that are going around the entire profile. So we're going to simply click the one that says preview all toolpaths. And what we have is a simple hole and we don't have the rest of the project. So we are going to take a look at his 2D image. Now, what I'm gonna do is go back into profile one, simply hover over profile one and double click it. When we do that, it opens that tool path back up. And now we're gonna take a look at the 2D drawing. 
and we're going to look at it alongside the 3D drawing. And the way we do that is by splitting our screens. In the upper right of the screen, or of your project, you'll see several icons. We want to select the very last icon to the right, where it says uh, arrange, um, arrange views vertically as uh, non-overlapping windows. So we're going to click that and now we can see both the 3D view and the 2D view. Now we are going to take a look at this 2D view a little bit closer so I'm going to maximize this 2D window by selecting the little square right over the window. We can select that and that expands that window. So the first few things that I see immediately are the that this is grouped so what grouping means is the outside of the charcuterie board and the circle or the hole are both part of a group meaning they're tied together they're married together they're bonded together you can't break them apart and do independent things with them as it stands right now and the way i can tell or the way you can tell is by the color of the line and the, the type of line it is a solid purple line and that means it is a grouped item and everything that is selected in it is grouped I'm gonna select right here I'm just simply going to click once with my left mouse button to deselect and now you notice everything went uh, went to a black line now nothing is selected if I come over and select the circle it is now purple, but so is the charcuterie board itself. And that tells me that everything is grouped. Now, the other thing that we have in here are these little yellow boxes with a T in them. Those are tabs. And tabs are little pieces of wood that are left over, or the router bit will come up and over and leave a little piece of material left so that the plug for the hole will remain intact. Uh, and you would cut it out later. Same with around the charcuterie board. There will be little tabs from the outside piece here that connect it to the charcuterie board after you cut it out. But that's another issue, uh, another item. It's not an issue. It's just what's there. We need to solve this problem. Now, I can almost see this problem right now. If we are looking at the charcuterie board, I noticed something, and you will notice something if you pay attention. As we come in here, we see a little bit of a doubling over of the line. This may or may not cause an issue, but it happens more often than we want it to. So we have to fix that, and I'm going to bet that that is where the problem is at. So first thing I'm going to do is exit this toolpath. So we're going to come over to the toolpath, select the close button, because I don't want to change it, and then come up to the upper right where that little blue arrow is, and I'm going to click the blue arrow that, so we can come back over to the drawing area. So I'm going to click that now. And we're in the drawing area. The first thing we need to do is ungroup these so that I can work with this little area right here. Right now, I cannot do any design modifications or changes or fix, figure out what's going on here until we ungroup this project. So before we do that, I want you to understand that when you are working with projects there are selections throughout the design areas that when you do something you have the option to bring things in as a group or not as a group and I always prefer to do it not as a group I'm not going to cover that here but you will most often see it well I'll, I'll show you quickly you will most often see it in this here when you are trying to trace over an image so we have this little icon that when you hover over it, it says trace bitmap or trace a picture. And we select that. And when we come down to the bottom, there is a there will be a little checkbox here. And that checkbox, if it's highlighted and you move forward, will bring your project in as a group. So just so you know, uh, you want to watch for that type of checkbox. So I am going to close this. And we're going to come back in and select this item. 
and we need to now ungroup it. And the way you do that is by selecting your grouped objects, which is selected right now, and we know it's selected, and we know it's grouped because the charcuterie board has a solid purple line, and when we click it, the circle also pops up with a solid purple line. So anywhere in the project, we do not have to hover our cursor over the line, just anywhere while the item is selected, click the right mouse button. I'm gonna stop this video for just a second because I have seen this so many times from people who are getting into this that it warrants this little interruption of this video. And that is those people who do not use a mouse and are always using the little uh, the, the touchpad on their computer and the little side scroll bars on the window. And you are working yourself so hard, it's ridiculous. Design software is built for a mouse, not for the keyboard and all those little things. Yes, you have all the little tools there, but you will find yourself working four to five times harder when you don't use a mouse. Get a mouse if you don't have one. I would say stop this video right now. Go down to the description section. I have a link for this particular mouse, which is a Logitech, which I like a ton off of Amazon, go get it. Don't even watch the rest of this video until you get the mouse because you really are hurting yourself when it comes to design. So please get a mouse and then you'll find your whole design world will be so much easier, so much more fluid. All right, I had to stop because I've seen it so much from people. Get a mouse, go down the description, click that link, buy it right now, and then resume this video. Let's get back to this design. So we're gonna click the right mouse button and a menu will pop up. And down in the middle, it says ungroup objects and then you have two selections that pop up. The first one is ungroup back to original object layers and the second one says ungroup to groups layer. So I'm not going to discuss this first one. We just want to ungroup to the groups layer. You will use this first one uh, uh, selection when you get a little bit more experienced and you'll understand how to use it then. We're simply gonna ungroup it to the groups layer and click and now you notice that everything is a dashed line and that is telling me all the vectors are independent. Now by vector, every line that is drawn is called a vector. And we have two types of vectors. We have an open vector and a closed vector. I'm gonna click right here to deselect everything and then I'm gonna come over and hover over the circle and click that. Now you notice this time, the circle comes in with a dashed line and it turns purple, which means it's selected, but the charcuterie board itself did not. That means they are now independent vectors, which is what we want. We are going to work with the charcuterie board, so we don't need this selected for the whole. So we're gonna click right here to deselect the circle and then we're going to click on the charcuterie board. Now this is where we need to take a look at items. Now you notice in this image right now there's a little bit of a strange anomaly in the dashed line and that's telling me that there is an issue going on there. You will see that and you will get used to seeing this. Sometimes these things just crop up and we I, I don't even know why they happen from time to time. So we zoom into it and we have this double line. So what we're going to do is take a look at the nodes. Nodes are the elements that indicate transition points. Now what I mean by a transition point, we have a straight line right up here and then it transitions into an arc or a curve. And so there has to be a node that tells the software that it is going to make that transition. So while the vector of the charcuterie board is selected, we're gonna press the letter N on the keyboard, N for Nancy. And you notice all these little black dots pop up. Now you see in this straight line, there is that black dot, that is a node, and then it goes into an arc. And this little white square with the line coming off it to the black dot, that is how you can adjust how these lines are working. We're not gonna get into that too much, but I'll just show you real quick. I'm gonna hover over it, and you notice that my arrow turns into a square target. When it's in a square target, that means I can grab that flag or tab. I'm not sure what they call it. 
I'm going to click my left mouse button and hold. And now I have grabbed that handle. It's called a handle. That's it. And now you can see I can move that handle around and I'm changing the line. And that's what that is for. So now I let it go. Now it's really weird. To undo that, press the control button down and hold it and then press Z. And that undoes that move. Okay, so let's take a look at this little area where we have this crossing over. So the crossover, the line comes up like that, and there's a node there, and then there's another line that's coming over in a slight arc like that. So we're going to grab one of these nodes and just move it to see what's going on. So I'm going to hover directly over that node. I get the square target. Now hold the left mouse button down and drag it and just move it out of the way. And there is the problem. What we have, why this is not working, is because this is an open vector as opposed to a closed vector. When Vectric is trying to do a profile cut, and by profile, we're cutting around the outside profile of the charcuterie board, it is looking for something called a closed vector. Here is the difference between a closed vector and an open vector. I'm going to grab a line and simply draw a line like that. And then I'll escape to get out of that. So the line has a start point right here. And you follow along it. And it has an end point. There is no two ways about it. There is a start point and an end point. Now, if I draw a rectangle, I'm doing this with a line again. And it won't even be a rectangle. It'll be an odd shape. Now, even though we started drawing this right here, if we just trace along, there technically is no end point to start and end. We have a start point here. We have an end point here. But there's not a start and end point here. We can start anywhere on a line, and we will just keep going around the line. So that's the difference between an open and closed vector. When we're doing a profile, oops, I hit a button on my keyboard. So let me just go back and hit the escape. Uh, delete button and delete there we go okay so this is where the problem is coming in Vectric is not seeing the outside line as a profile cut because of this issue right here so we need to close this vector so the way we do that is we're going to select the vector so I just simply uh, started from the right of the project held my left mouse button down and just crossed over so that little box is touching that line and then let go of the mouse button and it selected that vector. Then we're going to press the end button for node again so the nodes come up and I'm simply going to drag that node down to here. And the way I did that was again hover over the node. We'll come back up here. The node is up there. Hover over it. My my cursor turns into a target, which means I can now grab that node, hold my left mouse button down, and just simply drag it right there. And now it's kind of in line with this node right there. And this is where we're going to close this vector. So first of all, we're going to turn node off. And the way we do that is by pressing the node button or the escape button. I'm going to press the node button or N for Nancy and that turns node off and our line is currently selected. So we're going to come over to edit objects over here and then down in the bottom row are four icons. And it's the two middle icons that we are going to pay attention to. These two will allow you to close this vector or turn it into a, uh, a never-ending line going around in the shape of a charcuterie board. And we have two options. We can either do it with a straight line, which is this node, or we can do it with a curved line. Since this is pretty much a straight line at this point, we're simply going to do the straight line, but because it's such a small area, it does not matter very much. So now I want you to look at the line that we have, and I am going to click the straight line, join vectors with a straight line button right now. And you see that on that line, we have now created a line right there that joined that vector. So that the line joined between the two nodes. So I'm going to hit N again. And this is the line that was just added. 
and you see it's a little crooked here and in such a small item it doesn't really matter such a small area of the cut it doesn't really matter you're not really going to see it but we want this to be cleaned up a little bit so you're learning about nodes at the same time and we're going to clean this up by hovering over the green node now the green node indicates the start point of the cut that is where the router bit is going to come in to start cutting the charcuterie board so the green node is effectively a black node but it's just indicating where the cut is going to start at we're going to hover over the green node and hit the letter d on the keyboard and when i did that the green node disappeared from here and has now moved up to here so now we have a new start point we have now we now have a closed vector you can uh, continue to straighten this up as you want. Well, we'll just go ahead and get rid of this node as well. So we're going to hover over that one and hit D just to clean it up. There we go. And so everything is starting to look pretty good. Now it's time to go over to fix these tool paths. I'm going to hit the letter N to turn off node. And then we're going to come up to the little blue arrow in the upper left. Up, yeah, upper left. Select that and go over to tool path. Now we're going to go back into profile one. Before I do that, this can all be done in one tool path. So we don't need two tool paths. I'm going to select profile two, hover over it, hit the right button on my mouse to bring up this menu. And down at the bottom, it says delete. I'm going to hover over that. A new menu will open up and it says delete this. I'm going to select that and it will delete profile two. So now we only have one toolpath, the profile one. So we're going to double click into that. And now you notice that nothing is selected. And that is because we have altered these lines based on the toolpath. When we first had this toolpath, it was looking at everything as a group. We ungrouped it, which altered the nature of the lines. And so therefore, the toolpath can no longer recognize what it was what was originally selected. So we have to reselect. And what I'm going to do is simply over the handle here, I'm going to hover uh, to the upper right, hold the left mouse button down, and create a box that touches both lines. And that will select them both. Now you notice we have the tabs here, the little yellow boxes, but they're no longer around here. And that is because we altered this line. This is no longer what it was because we joined that. So it's completely different. Vector does not know where to put the tabs at that uh, Dylan had put in. Hey, I wanted to stop for a second and just to ask you if you feel like you're getting something out of this video, some little tips and tricks that you might not have known as a Vectric beginner, can you do me a favor and just below this video is a little thumbs up button. Can you hit that? That's called a like. And maybe if you feel like you want to get some more stuff out of this Vectric stuff and want to learn this stuff really fast, then you probably want to subscribe to this channel because I teach everything at this kind of level and a lot of project work. Basically, I do a lot of little projects for you easy projects that start you from the very beginning all the way through the design and how to set it up on your CNC router and I teach you how to run it all the way out on your CNC router so you might want to subscribe to the channel as well and I would love to see a comment down below of things that you might want to see or what you gained out of this video also down in the description are a lot of links number one is for the CNC insiders that's an email list that I have that if you want to get free free design files and some discounts to things that I've been able to get that I don't make available on the public YouTube channel you'll want to get on the CNC insiders list and the link to sign up for that is down below also if you're interested in a CNC business CNC entrepreneurs Facebook group is a group of 25,000 CNC creators who are starting businesses are uh, all the way up to who have become very successful so you can get a lot of tips and tricks in there as to how to start a cnc business so like the video button down below that little thumbs up thing and subscribe if you want to learn this stuff all the way from designing to cnc routers to how to start a cnc business and of course check all the links down in the description because there's lots of little things that will help you out and remember <laughs> get a mouse please 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 get a mouse your life will be so much easier so 
we now have these items selected and we're just going to fix up these tabs real quick I'm going to show you I'll add you add a little bit uh, uh, of uh, education here for you how do we get the tabs back in here down in this section of the toolpath setup there's a little check box that says add tabs to toolpath and that box is checked if I uncheck that box the tabs on the circle will go away so I uncheck that and they are now gone and that's because we're now telling the software we don't want them if we check it again the tabs that were added are there but we want to add our tabs to the charcuterie board itself so we're gonna go down to add tabs select that and then up top it says uh, the the number of tabs that we want and it says four and we simply click the add tabs button and now when you look at the whole project there are four tabs on the outside of the charcuterie board if you want your tabs to be in different places it's very easy number one you can hover your little plus sign over the tab hold your left mouse button down and drag that tab to the new place that you want if you want to add a tab you simply hover over the line where you want the tab and click once with your left mouse button and that tab has been added if you want to remove a tab you hover over this the tab and click your left mouse button again and it goes away so I can delete that tab I can add it I can delete it I can add it I can add a whole bunch of tabs all along this project so we're gonna click them again because I don't want them and we'll move that on over there and then we're gonna come over and close the tabs menu now all we have to do is run the project I'm gonna come down one thing you want to do is always name your toolpath. So we're going to name this toolpath board and hole. And then we want to add in the router bit that we are using. In this case, he's using a one quarter inch end mill. So we're going to type in 14EM. And we will calculate. And you notice now that the name has taken in the toolpath it's no longer profile one it is board and hole 14 em but the thing I want you to notice now is we now have let's reset that preview we now have blue lines everywhere we now know that the software is going to cut out the board and cut the hole so all we have to do now is preview this so let's just explain this real quick we got the red line I think I explained this before but I forget if I did or not the red line that's where the the start point of the project is over to the lower left corner it's going to wrap it over to here and the the tool is going to move down into the material and the each blue line is a cut so you can see it is going to cut one two three four times on the hole and one two three four times on the charcuterie board now you notice those funny little cuts are no longer at the bottom of the hole like they were before and that's because vector cannot add the tabs because they are too wide and too close together and, and it will not work so vector does not calculate in the tabs but you notice right here we have a little lift up on the toolpath this is where the tabs are going to be created so we have one over here one here and then we've got them over in the other part of the board so let's take a look and see what we have so we're going to come over and preview all tool paths select that and there is our charcuterie board we're going to just double click on the plug in the hole and that will make that go away now if we double click on the scrap material over here it will not go away we get an alert because we are attached by the tabs and so that's why we can't delete that scrap but now you can see that we have this fixed so just a quick reiteration of where the problem was I'm going to switch over to the 2d toolpath and our problem was that little overlap and you can notice it just by seeing a little uh, aberration or whatever you want to call it in the dash lines when you see that you want to scroll in close to the project and
take a look and see what's going on. Well, now we've solved Dylan's problem with a charcuterie board. And for you as a CNC beginner using Vectric in your early stages of learning it, you have learned uh, quite a few things about grouping, vectors being open, nodes, how to join vectors. We talked about tabs and uh, what? How to look for some of these different things and how to spot them and how to fix them. So please remember to check the description down below, join CNC Insiders, the CNC Entrepreneurs, get yourself a mouse, please like the video. And if you want more of this stuff, subscribe to this channel because you're gonna learn so much stuff. See the description, have a great day, better tomorrow, and happy CNC. -ing.